Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. That one English teacher here. And what this video entails is me going to a local library book sale and getting a ton of titles. I'm super excited to show you everything that I got. I will list titles and authors in the description box below in case you're interested in looking into any of these for yourself. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. And I'm gonna go ahead and address, yes, I have a nose ring. Summer is here. I wear it up when I'm at work. I'll show you. Ta-da! So, yes, I have a nose ring. Don't let it distract you. Moving forward. Now you're gonna hear from past me as we gear up and go to the library book sale. Okay, so in my fervor of excitement, I went outside of my house without my keys. All right, we have been rescued. We are on the way and we are excited. All right, I have just arrived. It is a bit rainy today, so that might decrease the amount of foot traffic. So hopefully we'll have some really good finds. I have a specific goal. I'm looking for nonfiction and texts that have male protagonists or members of the LGBTQIA plus community because uh, those are some areas in my classroom library that are a little weak so I'm looking to bolster those uh, as I transition to a new classroom. Here we go. Okay so I may have gone a little overboard which happens to me when I go to library book sales but if you notice this Ikea bag behind me is full of brand new to me books. So when I get home I'm gonna do a book haul. I'm gonna show you everything that I got and what's gonna be going into my classroom library and what I intend to read hopefully this summer. I've never been to this particular library book sale before so 10 out of 10 definitely recommend support your local libraries. Hello hello it has only been a moment for you but it is much later in the day for me. I am home. I have my books out of the bag so it wouldn't be quite so heavy. And looking over everything, I think I did really well, considering. I went in with the plan of male protagonists or LGBTQIA+. Didn't find very much of that at all, gonna be honest. I might have to buy those specifically from like Book Depository or Amazon or whatever. So I will get to that, don't get me wrong. I have 17 texts with male protagonists. I'm gonna show you those in a moment. I have three others that are also male, if I'm not mistaken, but they're a little older, and so I'm not entirely sure yet. I might have to read them before adding them to the classroom library. I have Zodiac by Robert Graysmith, which I'm interested in reading this. I really wanna know about this book. Um, and if I read it and I think it's okay, I'll bring it in. We'll see. Uh, the next one, Past Crimes, a Van Shaw novel by Glenn Eric Hamilton. The back of the book sold me, I'm going to be honest. I've never heard of this author. I'm not sure who Van Shaw is, but looks really interesting. American Sniper uh, with Chris Kyle, Jim DeFilice, and Scott McEwen. Autobiography of the most lethal sniper in U.S. history. So definitely more young adult slash adult material, but it's it's not a biography. So it, I think it would be appropriate. I think it'll be okay. We'll see. I'm going to read it. Because male protagonist books were my main focus, I want to deal with these texts first. So go ahead and jump right in. This is a middle level, and I wasn't going to get it. <clears throat> but after I read the inside, I, I couldn't leave it there. So it's called Posted by John David Anderson. And when you look at the inner flap, it says, in middle school, words aren't just words. They can be weapons. They can be gifts. The right words can win you friends or make you enemies. They can come back to haunt you. Sometimes they can change things forever. Already into it. When cell phones are banned at Branton Middle School, Frost and his friends, Dee Dee, Wolf, and Bench, interesting names, come up with a new way to communicate, leaving sticky notes for each other all around the school. It catches on and soon all the kids in school are leaving are. notes. Though for every kind and friendly one, there is a cutting and cruel one as well. In the middle of this, a new girl named Rose arrives at school and sits at Frost's lunch table. Rose is not like anyone else at Branton Middle School, and it's clear that the close circle of friends Frost has made for himself won't easily hold together. As the sticky note war escalates and the pressure to choose sides mounts, Frost soon realizes that after this year, nothing will ever be the same. Right? I love the whole premise. I love the idea of like cell phones being banned. That was kind of a theme in a lot of the books that I chose today. 
um, the idea of technology and how it is progressing and how it impacts students. I'm actually gonna break my own rule and break over to the stack of books about female protagonists because this also won me over. It's called Can't Look Away by Donna Cooner. Besides the fact that the cover is super cool. Hello beauty stars, I am so sorry I haven't posted for so long. I wanted to update you. I stopped recording, then watched the clip. The face reflected in the monitor is like a ghost. My eyes look so tired and sad. The tears well up and spill silently down my cheeks. This isn't what my fans sign on to watch. They want me to tell them whether to buy a MAC 224 crease brush or a MAC 217 blending brush for their Bobbi Brown eyeshadow. My vlogs are always supposed to be confident, inspirational, and delightfully personal. Viewers know all about me. They want to be me. It's a big responsibility. It's so timely. With so many of my students wanting to be YouTube influencers as a career option. Oh, oh my gosh. I love the whole idea. On the inside jacket, when is it time to turn off the camera? Tori Gray is famous, at least on the internet. Thousands of people watch her videos on fashion and beauty, but when Tori's sister is killed in an accident, maybe because of Tori and her videos, Tori's perfect world implodes. Now, strangers online are bashing Tori, and at her new school, she doesn't know who to trust. Is Queen Bee Blair only interested in Tori's infamy? What about Raylene, who is unpopular but seems to accept Tori for who she is? And then there's Lewis, with his brooding dark eyes, whose family runs the local funeral home. Tori finds herself drawn to Lewis and his fascinating stories about El Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. As the Day of the Dead draws near, Tori will have to really look at her own feelings about death and life and everything in between. Can she learn to mourn her sister out of the public eye? Guys, had to. Middle level boy, high school level girl protagonist, very exciting. So, one for one. I apologize, but I might be picking off stickers as we go forward because I understand that stickers are necessary at book sales, but I hate them. I hate them very, very much. Don't like stickers on my books. Why don't you have easy to fill stickers? Now there is a sticky residue on my book. <clears throat> also, it is raining outside and thundering. My cat is afraid of thunder, so might be panicking and running about. My pupper dog is out of his kennel and might come and visit us periodically. Not to worry about that. But anywho. Okay, so next I have Red Kayak by Priscilla Cummings. I have never read this, but I've heard that it's good. Brady loves his life on the Chesapeake Bay, crabbing and oyster fishing with his friends JT and Digger. But developers and rich summer families are moving into the area, and while Brady best friends some of them, while Brady befriends some of them, like the D'Angelos, his parents and friends are bitter about all the new construction. Tragedy strikes the D'Angelos when their kayak overturns in the bay, and Brady's left wondering if what happened was more than an accident. Soon, Brady discovers the terrible truth behind the kayak sinking. He must decide whether or not to share his secret when it means that his life and the lives of his friends and family will never be the same. Dark. I have two of the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I got book two and book three, uh, The Sea of Monsters and The Titan's Curse, both by Rick Royden. I don't have the entire series for my classroom. I've not read the series, but it is insanely popular. Um, I had a couple of the books. They're quick, easy reads, and sometimes they find their way off of my shelf forever. So I have those two. I additionally got this. So I got books one, two, and three of The Dangerous Days of Daniel X by James Patterson and Michael Ledwich. Seems like a normal kid at first, but Daniel X is strong enough to fight anybody in the world. It's no wonder after a lifetime of dodging and destroying a hideous host of deadly extraterrestrial criminals chasing after him to the ends of the earth because he's the alien hunter in bold. Daniel's on a mad mission to eliminate every last intergalactic evil on the list of alien outlaws on terra firma. One hair-raising and heart-stopping battle at a time, these vile villains have finally met their match because Daniel's an alien too, and he has the greatest superpower of all, the power to create. Okay, so teenage Sherlock Holmes, 
uh, finds a body and then he goes off on a mystery. It's the first teen series endorsed by the Conan Doyle estate. Hmm. Shocking murder mystery. Kind of, kind of hard to go wrong with that and it's a hardback. I love having hardbacks when I can get them. The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Woe by Junot Diaz or Juno Diaz. Things have never been easy for Oscar, a sweet but disastrously overweight ghetto nerd, a New Jersey romantic who dreams of becoming the Dominican J.R.R. Tolkien, and most of all of finding love, but he may never get what he wants thanks to the Fuku, the ancient curse that has hunt haunted Oscar's family for generations, dooming them to prison, torture, tragic accidents, and above all, ill-starred love. Oscar, still dreaming of his first kiss, is only its most recent victim until the fateful summer that he decides to be its last. Rendered with uncommon warmth and humor, the brief, wondrous life of Oscar Woe presents an astonishing vision of the contemporary American experience and the endless human capacity to persevere and to risk it all in the name of love. Cute, but family curse, right? I thought it was interesting. We have Bloodline by Kate Carey. I'm a big paranormal fan personally. I like vampire novels. When I was in middle and high school, I was pretty obsessed with vampires, not Twilight. Never really got into the series. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but if you like Twilight, that's fine. You're more than more than welcome to like Twilight. I grew up with the Anne Rice interview with the vampire, the vampire Lestat, etc., etc. So that's the kind of vampire I wanted. And it made young adult vampires kind of hard to compete with. That's why there are times when I think adult level books can be accepted in a classroom because I was one of those students who read adult books when I was very young. So it just depends on the reader and who's interested in what. Male protagonist, a 19 year old John Shaw returns from the trenches of World War One. He is haunted by nightmares, but only of the horrors of battle, but of the strange, cruel and impossible feats of his regiment's commander, Quincy Harker. Parker's ferocity knows no limits and his strength seems superhuman. At first, John blames his bloody nightmares on trench fever, but when Harker appears in England and begins wooing John's sister, Lily, John must confront the truth and stop Harker from continuing Dracula's bloodline. Hmm? Hmm. Oh, that was pretty neat. So, I'm probably gonna read this one before I even take it in. Going Where It's Dark by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor, Buck Anderson. His life seems to be changing completely. His best friend David has moved away. His anxious parents are hounding him more than ever. He has reluctantly agreed to fill in for his uncle and do odd jobs for a grumpy old man in the town. And his twin sister has a new boyfriend and is never around anymore. To top it all off, Buck is bullied by a group of kids at school, mainly because he stutters. There is one thing that frees Buck from his worries. It is the heart-pounding exhilaration he feels when exploring underground caves in and around his hometown. Doge. Down. There is one thing that frees Buck from his worries. It is the heart-pounding exhilaration he feels when exploring underground caves in and around his hometown. He used to go caving with David, but he's determined to continue on his own now. Foreshadowing. He doesn't know that more changes are headed his way, changes that might make him rethink the view of the world and his place in it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm personally claustrophobic. I would never want to go caving, as the protagonist states, but it does seem as though it would set him up for a pretty action-packed adventure, because you don't really know what's going to happen, and there could be something that he discovers in the cave, so a lot of, again, mystery, things that you want to find out. So that's that. So this is Being by Kevin Brooks, and I wasn't going to get this one either, because it was not with the young adults. I was just, all I saw was the spine, and it intrigued me. So, opening it up, it was just supposed to be a routine examination. But when the doctors snake the telescopic tube down Robert Smith's throat, what they discover him doesn't make medical sense. In his naked, anesthetized state on the operating table, Robert hears the surgeon's shocked comments. What the hell is that? It's me, Robert thinks, and I've got to get out of here. Armed with a stolen automatic, Robert somehow manages to escape from the hospital, but before he can even begin to make sense of the raw red scar stitched across his stomach, he's targeted for murder by a steel-eyed assailant with an identity so covert there's no proof he actually exists. Robert's only ally is Eddie, a beautiful thief he needs but doesn't trust. 
Off the radar, on the run, the two desperate fugitives embark on a violent odyssey to clear Robert's name and find out exactly who, exactly what, he is. So, apart from having a question about where he is able to steal an automatic while he's in a hospital, something's up with this fella. And I have more questions than answers because there's nothing on the back of the book but continuation of that picture. This is just a haul video, so I am not expected to know everything about every book that I bought. When I go to library book sales, I find books that I think might be interesting for young readers or for me. And... If they turn out to be flops, they turn out to be flops because sometimes, like this, I bought for a dollar. So, in the grand scheme of things, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. <laughs> so, if you've read this or if you've read any of these and I'm kind of giving them the wrong slant, I apologize. Don't mean any, you know, offense or anything like that. I'm just letting you guys know what I got. So, that's another one. After by Francine Prose. And this was really interesting because... It's a response novel to a fictional school shooting. So the shootings in Pleasant Valley were 50 miles away, but at Central High, a grief and crisis counselor is hired, security is increased, and privileges are being taken away. No one knows why. If you break the new rules, the punishment is severe, and the rules keep changing every day. School feels like a prison. It's for their protection. Yet 15-year-old Tom Bishop and his friends learn that things are far more sinister than they seem. Students and teachers begin disappearing. There's no way to stop it. Oh, this reminds me of an old Goosebumps book where I think it was like aliens or something. But it's, a, it's set in a school and they start taking more and more control and then people start disappearing and then these weird clones come back. It's, it's what it reminded me. This... This was interesting. It is apparently the first in a series, um, the Chaos Walking series, but this is the first book, The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. It sounds cool. So, Prentice Town isn't like other towns. Everyone can hear everyone's thoughts in an overwhelming, never-ending stream of noise, and it's capitalized. But in a town where privacy is impossible, there is a secret so awful that Todd, still a month shy of being a man, must run for his life. But how do you escape when your pursuers can hear your every thought? Love it. This sounds like a high speed read. These three I was super stoked about because they're all kind of like cyberpunky. They're not a series or anything, but they were all kind of in that same vein. So this is called the Soft Wire Virus on Orbis 1 by PJ Harzma. If I pronounced that wrong, I apologize. It is very futuristic. When the children on the seed ship Renaissance are orphaned in outer space, 13-year-old Johnny Turnbull and his sister Katharia are forced to work as Knudniks on the rings of Orbis. But Johnny soon discovers that he is the first human softwire. He has a special gift that allows him to enter any computer with his mind. And when the central computer on Orbis mysteriously malfunctions, the citizens point their fingers at the softwire. Before long, Johnny is embroiled in a struggle between the keepers who rule Orbis and the trading council which wants him dead. As he learns to harness his newfound ability, Johnny uncovers a virus wreaking havoc inside the computer. Now he must convince the powers that be on Orbis that the virus is real before they make war on each other and destroy his new home, along with Johnny's dream of a better life. So, a really cool take on, like, the Chosen One protagonist. Very technology-heavy, very futuristic. I'm into it. So next we have Want by Cindy Pond. It looks super cool. I really hate that the back of books nowadays is just authors talking about how awesome the book is. I would rather know more about what is going on in the book rather than what these random individuals thought of it. But Jason Zhao survives in a divided society where the elite use their wealth to buy longer lives. The rich wear special suits that protect them from the pollution and viruses that plague the city, while those without suffer illness and early deaths. Frustrated by his city's corruption and still grieving the loss of his mother who died as a result of it, Zhao is determined to change things no matter the cost. 
With the help of his friends, Zhao infiltrates the lives of the wealthy in hopes of destroying the international Jin Corporation from within. Jin Corp not only manufactures the special suits that rich rely on, but they may also be manufacturing the pollution that makes them necessary. Dun dun dun. Yet, the deeper Zhao delves into this new world of excess and wealth, the more muddled his plans become. And against his better judgment, Zhao finds himself falling for Dayu, the daughter of Jin Corp CEO. Can Zhao save his city without compromising who he is or destroying his own heart? Oh, super cute. I love like sci-fi dystopia. I love like corrupted governments and teens taking over and, and finding solutions. And besides the fact, this has a protagonist of color. So always a win. And then for the final text with a male protagonist, we have Railhead by Philip Reeve. Step aboard. The universe is waiting. The noon train shrugged a weird motion like nothing he had felt before. Dreadful noises added themselves to the din of the klaxon. Acceleration tugged him in various directions, pressing him to the crawl space roof, then slamming him against the dead maintenance spider. If the spider was dead, did that mean that the train was dead too? Nova in his head, trying to calm down. Zen, move toward the back of the carriage. There is a hatch that leads out onto the roof. Don't forget you're weightless. What's happening? He asked looping the strap of the ray gun over his shoulder and worming his way through the dark. He could see the hatch now. She must have opened it. Light was flooding in. Bad thing, she said. He reached the hatch, struggled over onto his back, and pulled himself up through the roof of the train. She was right. Besides the fact, when you open it up, apart from all of these stickers, look at how pretty. Love this. Look at that. Gorgeous. The Great Network is an ancient web of routes and gates where sentient trains can take you anywhere in the galaxy in the blink of an eye. But the network is also a hazardous mess of twists and turns and nothing is as it seems. So when petty thief and railhead Zen Starling is hired by the mysterious Raven, the job appears simple enough. Steal one small box from the Emperor's train, live the rest of his days in luxury. Secrets and danger lie in wait on the rails, and that little box might just bring everything in this galaxy and the next to the end of the line. Crafting not only a thrilling adventure set in a fully realized world, Reeve expertly weaves an emotional, complex tale that explores the triumphs and struggles of being an imperfect traveler through a beautifully strange and perilous universe. I just, I just, I just want to read it. I just want to read it. Moving on to... The remaining text that I got that had female protagonists, um, and I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly because this is getting to be a bit of a long video. Uh, we have Ever Lost by Neil Schusterman. This is about a brother and sister pair who uh, don't survive a car crash, but their souls are kind of stuck in a limbo situation, and they find like a group of other lost soul children, and the brother's content to just kind of hang out with them, but the sister's kind of pushing a little further to try to figure out what else is there because she's not happy with just being in limbo. thought that was really interesting. A very creative like take on death and life and everything in between. So I thought that was fun. Listen Slowly by Than Hale. I am certain I mispronounced that so I super duper apologize. Um, I got this because I do like finding protagonists of other cultures. I don't like all of my books just focus on white bread America. When I was little, Bob would whisper all kinds of maybes to herself when she thought I was asleep. I remember now. I used to sneak in and sleep with her. Deep in the night, I'd hear murmurs of maybe Ong escaped. Maybe Ong lost his memory, but was healthy and happy. Maybe Ong was stuck in a place where no one knew the war had ended. Maybe Ong was thinking of us right now. I listened even when I couldn't hear every word because some remained in her throat. No matter how I listened, though, I never knew how she would ever come to a point where she would no longer need the maybes. The protagonist is a bit younger. This, this would also be considered middle grade, but it, here we go. 12 year old May can't wait to take a break from being perfect, but all straight A's and countless extracurricular activities have gotten her as an unwanted trip to a foreign country she's never been to, over 8,000 miles from home. Mai's parents are making her spend her vacation in Vietnam so she can learn more about her roots and help her grandmother learn what really happened to her grandfather during the Vietnam War. Since Mai barely knows the language or custom, she is desperately counting down the days until she can go back home. But as time goes on, Mai begins to grow closer to her family and develops an understanding of a culture and an entire world that she never really knew about. So, that sounds beautiful. Sticker. Ah. I hate stickers. 
Cadaver and Queen by Alyssa Quitney. Knowledge will rule and the empire will rise. So this is another kind of sci-fi, maybe dystopia. When Elizabeth Lavenza enrolled in Ingold, it was as its first female medical student. She knew she wouldn't have an easy time. From class demands to being an outsider among her male cohort, she'll have to go above and beyond to prove herself. So when she stumbles across what appears to be a faulty biomechanical, one of the mechanized cadavers created to service the school, she jumps at the chance to fix it and get ahead in the program. Only this biomechanical isn't like the others, where they were usually empty-minded and perfectly obedient. This one seems to have thoughts, feelings, and self-awareness. Soon Elizabeth realizes that it is Victor Frankenstein, meh, a former student who died under mysterious circumstances. Victor, it seems, still has a spark of human intelligence inside him, along with memories of things he discovered before his untimely death and a suspicion that he was murdered to keep that information from getting out. Suddenly, Elizabeth finds herself intertwined in dark secrets and sabotage that puts her life and the lives of Victor and her friends in danger. But Elizabeth's determined to succeed, even if that means fighting an enemy who threatens the entire British Empire. Love the nod to Frankenstein. I love that she is a woman in a man's world. I love that she's a medical student. All very cool. In Real Life by Jessica Love. It is about a young girl named Hannah. Chow and she has this like online relationship with a fella named Nick Cooper. They've been best friends since eighth grade. They've talked only online. They've never met. And when her senior year spring break plans are ruined, she decides to go to Vegas with her best friend and older sister to meet Nick and finds that he has a lot of secrets that he has not been sharing with her. Now she has only one night in Sin City to figure out what her feelings for Nick really are, all while discovering how life can change when you break the rules every now and then because she broke the rules to go to Vegas. Another timely thing where the internet um, determines a lot of our interactions with others. I got the first book in the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. Again, another book that was super, super popular that I never read. I did see the movie, I liked it. I like the premise, it's very Hunger Games-ish. So, got that one. This is Other by Karen Kinsey. Gwen Williams has been hiding a strange and fantastic secret. She is a shapeshifter. Although society may tolerate vampires, centaurs, and others like Gwen, there are plenty of folks in her small Washington town who don't care for her kind. When a new werewolf pack moves into the area, tensions rise and others start showing up dead, including someone close to Gwen. Despite the methodical murders, the police are ignoring evidence that suggests a serial killer. In the midst of terrible loss and danger, Gwen, along with a mysterious and sexy guy who happens to be a Japanese fox spirit, risks her life to find the murderer, but Gwen is already the killer's next target. I mean, this could be good, it could be a flop, I'm not sure. This was kind of just like, oh, I'm really interested in the fact that she's a shapeshifter. So, we'll see. Cuckoo Song by Frances Hardridge. Uh, it is, it just seems super creepy. Following a mysterious accident that left her sopping wet, Triss awakens to a world that's eerily off kilter. Her memories are muddled, her sister despises her, pages have been stolen of her private journal, and her appetite is insatiable. Confusion quickly turns to dread as she begins to see and hear things she shouldn't. Her dolls reveal themselves to be deceitful, living creatures. Nope. She's suddenly and inexplicably afraid of scissors, and when she brushes her hair, out sprinkle crumpled fragments of leaves. Then she stumbles across evidence that her beloved brother, killed in the war, is actually alive. And she begins to suspect that the secrets lurking within her home are even more shocking than her twisted new reality. Is Triss going mad, or did her accident trigger a nightmarish chain of events? In her quest to learn the truth, Triss ventures from the shelter of her parents' protective wings into the city's underbelly. There she encounters strange creatures whose grand schemes could forever alter the fates of her family. Creepy. Perfect for the weather. I love stormy, rainy nights. They're such a comfortable time to cuddle up with a good book. And this is probably going to be my first choice to read for pleasure. This is called Birthmarked by Kara M. O'Brien. Those marked with a code will determine the future. One marred by a scar will unravel the past. So, in the future, in a world baked dry by the harsh sun, there are those who live inside the wall and those, like 16-year-old midwife Gaia Stone, who live outside. Gaia has always believed that it is her duty with her mother to hand over a small quota of babies to the Enclave. 
like a child's version of The Handmaid's Tale. But when Gaia's mother and father are arrested by the very people they so dutifully serve, Gaia is forced to question everything she has been taught to believe. Gaia's choice is now simple. Enter the world of the Enclave to rescue her parents or die trying. This is Full Cicada Moon by Marilyn Hilton. We have a protagonist of color. Change can start with just one brave person speaking up. As the Apollo 11 mission prepares to go to the moon, Mimi Yoshiko Oliver gets ready to move to a new state. But in 1969, Vermont is mostly white and her half black, half Japanese Mimi, her appearance is enough to make her feel alien. She struggles to fit in with her classmates, even as she defies stereotypes by entering science competitions and trying to take shop class instead of home ec. And though teachers and neighbors balk at her unconventional family and her refusals to conform, Mimi's dreams of becoming an astronaut never fade, no matter how many times she's told no. Judged because of her skin color and boxed in because of her gender, Mimi is determined to break the mold. This lyrical novel in verse follows her journey to fit into the world and to better it. So, protagonist of color, gender issues, and it's written in like freeform poetry, which I love. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is take the stickers off the remaining books and get them into a nice storage place until the school year gets started up and then they will be transitioned to my classroom library. So thanks so much for coming with me on this adventure. I really had a lot of fun going to the library book sale. I super recommend it if you're ever aware of a library book sale coming your way. You can get a lot of really good titles for very inexpensive prices and it just makes you feel good. It's always exciting to have so many worlds available to you and all you have to do is crack open a book. All right, thanks for showing up guys. I'll see you on the next one.